Do you agree with that the name of Jesus is higher than every other name? Yes. It's higher than every other name. Higher. Yes, we call on you, Jesus. Jesus. We call on you, Jesus. Oh, we call on you, Jesus. I call you, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus. That's who you are. It's very simple. Let's sing it together. I call you, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Come on, mention his Jesus, name. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Come on, just mention the name of Jesus. That's who you are. Come on, say it again. I call you Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Precious name. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. That's the sweetest name ever. That's who you are. Lift up your voice and call his name. Just call his name. your voice and begin to talk to Jesus. Lift your voice. Lift your voice. Lift your voice to him. Lift your voice to him.
keep lifting your voice. Just let him know you are here. Just let him know you are here. There are many people that were calling Jesus. But the voice of blind Bartimaeus was more potent and stronger. And he stood still for him. He did not stand still for any. But he stood still for him. Because there was something unique about his voice. There are many gathered here right now. But as much as many are gathered right now. You must be the one that he will hear the voice. You must be distinct. Lift your voice. Let him know tonight you have nothing else to do than to encounter him. Anything less of that is disappointment. The only thing you want from him now is to encounter him for real. Anything less of that is a disappointment to the service. You want to touch him. He must also touch you. Lift your voice. Lift your voice. Lift your voice. Lift your voice. Roble pro prata barki di bidebe. Iri uro ro 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 Jaka da 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 zibidi brom peri antari bidi bidi bi. He's coming down with his chariots. He's coming down with his angels. Who will reach out to him more? More than ever before. Lord, it's not because I don't have a home. That is why I'm here. It's not because I don't have anything to do. That is why I'm here. But there is something more important than anything I could have done with this time. This is your time, Lord. This is the time for you. Lord, if you change me, I will know I have been changed. If you revive me, I will know I have been revived. If you heal me, I will know I have been healed. The one you say has come to worship you. Say, Savior, yes, 
blood. Savior, 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 Savior. Savior, the one you saved, the one you saved has come to worship you. You are the Savior. Savior. Lift up your voice, lift up your hands and tell him you are coming here for a reason. Savior, Savior, the one you saved, the one you saved, has come to worship you, Savior, Savior, he's a Savior. Savior, Savior, the one you saved, the one you saved, has come to worship you. The one you saved, the one you saved. Has come to worship you, the one you saved, the one you saved, has come to worship you, Savior. You are my Savior. My Savior. Savior, the one you saved, the one you saved, has come to worship you. The one you saved, the one you saved, has come to worship you, Savior. You are my Savior. Savior. He's our Savior. Come on out, tell him. Savior. The one you saved, the one you saved, has come to worship you. The one you saved, the one you saved. Has come to worship you, the one you save, the one you save. Has come to worship you, the one you save, the one you save. Has come to worship you, the one you love, the one you love. Has come to worship you. The one you love, the one you love, has come to worship you. So, Savior, Savior. you are my Savior. The one you love, the one you love, has come to worship you. The one you love, has come to worship you. Now lift up your voice and tell him you love him. The one you love, has come to worship you. Tell him. The one you love has come to worship you. 
the one you healed has come to worship you. The one you healed has come to worship you. I came to worship. Oh, 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 Keep on going. Speak to the king. Speak to the king, immortal, invincible, the only wise God. Speak to the king, immortal, invincible, the only wise God. Lift your voice. You should be speaking in tongues while sending this. Oh, Can you take your seat, please? I never knew you favor me this way. You turn my life around. But then I never imagine bringing me this far. You turn my the devil wants someone to be ungrateful, but you are telling him ah, there's a reason to praise God. Never knew. Tonight he will turn somebody's life around. I never knew, I never knew, I never knew. I never 
from you, you favor me this way. You turn my life around. few things with you as we build gradually into his presence. I was sharing something with Pastor Charles after the first service and I said why is it that a lot of people worship God but they don't get results? May I ask God questions? Why do people sow seeds and the seed doesn't grow? And those of you who came here on Friday, I taught you about a man who was in church for 38 years. How many years? And the only problem with him is that he came to church with a mattress to sleep. So when Jesus met him, he said, pick your bed and go home. Because he, whilst he was waiting for the water to be stirred, God was waiting for him to stir himself. So when Jesus met him, he said, the problem is not the water being stirred. The problem is that you came here to sleep. So Jesus said, Pick your bed and go home because he came to church to sleep waiting for magic. God doesn't do magic. Magic doesn't become permanent. God's work, God's works are permanent. Magic. So he said, I've been waiting for 38 years for the waters to stir. And any time the water is stirred, my neighbor gets seen before me. Wait a minute. You want somebody to come and stir your faith up? Then you will never make it in life because in this modern world, the one who is encouraging you himself needs encouragement. <laughs> and, was, and David encouraged himself in the Lord. Because there comes a time that the Bible says in the last days, one of the signs of the last days is people will be unthankful, ungrateful. People is natural now. And sometimes you can be in church like this and worship is going on, music is going on, and a song hits you. And you feel deep in your spirit. I stand up and you roll yourself around. And you look around and say, I'm shy. But you want the Holy Ghost to not be shy. If you like screaming, it will disturb service. You don't need a miracle. Mark chapter 2, Jesus is busy teaching like I'm teaching. Before he knows, he has yet to grow, 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 grow. What's the problem? You are dropping a human being on a mattress from the top to the ground. Preaching my seeds. And when Jesus saw their faith, he said, ah, you are healed. The guy was stirred. It's what Jesus was who had faith oh. you see you don't come to a service like this and depend on the faith of the man of God you need your own faith because if you need the faith of the man of God then the one who appeals to the man of God most will get his attention but when you want to encounter God for yourself there are things that comes to stir you up it stirs you up Sometimes the message is being preached is choking you. You have to stand up and put your hands on your belly and start screaming mercy. Sometimes you put your hands on your head and say, God, how did I miss this? Why? Because they are all an act of faith to stir you up. An angel does not come in this modern time to stay atmosphere, no. We stay atmosphere. How do we stay atmosphere? There are certain basic things we do. 
He said, enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his cause with praise. You get nothing from God until you are a thankful person and a praising person. Until you are a praising somebody, you are a thankful somebody, until you are an appreciating somebody. I always say that thank you simply means can you do another one? So if you've not said thank you for the first one, how can you have another thank you? So I was talking to Pastor Charles and I said, men who pour their miracles, their faith on the wrong altar. When the Lord said altar, I was like, God, but this altar of this church is powerful. He said, Francis, I'm not talking about your altar. I'm talking about their altar. I said, God, I don't understand. He said, read your Bible. You see that in Gideon's time, Judges chapter 6. When God called Gideon, the first thing he told him is to go to your house and pull down your family altar and erect a new one. Because any sacrifice you put, if you have not broken down the old, the sacrifice is to the old God. It's not to God. You can be mentioning God's name, but the one who is receiving it is the one who is still on the throne. So tonight, if the one who is sitting on the throne of your heart is the devil, at the praise you are giving is to the devil, not to God. So he said, Gideon, 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 what do you need to do is before I can help you pull down your family altar and erect a new altar. I said, Pastor, which altar are you talking about? He said, if you come to God with an offering and you remember that somebody has something against you, have something against that person, put the offering down, go and reconcile and come. Why? Because that seed you put there will not flourish because the altar is an altar of unforgiveness. And if you put that seed on that altar, nothing is going to grow. And you might end up thinking, why am I not getting results? I gave higher than this person. The difference is that the altar is not really this church. The altar, you are, you are giving a seed to the church, right? But the altar on which you are showing the seed that it will grow, is not a church that will grow. It is your life that will benefit. So the real ground is your life. If not, then when you pour it to the church, the church will flourish and call you and say, we are happy to inform you that we are dashing you 2,000 Ghana. Because last time you helped us, so we are, we are happy to inform you that we too we are helping you some. But the truth is that it's not a church that the seed you grow on grows on. The seed grows in you, your life. So much as you are pouring prayer, worship. I thought they would give us the Gideon chapter 6 scripture where God told him to pull down the family altar. And this evening before I can move on, somebody here is going to pull down every altar. Sometimes one altar, one altar is your crown, is your crown, is your title, your crown. Now, I am Reverend Yali, Senior Pastor, Bridge Ministry International. Master, stop that nonsense. When I meet my mom, she doesn't call me Reverend. She said, Francis, you don't come to God with your big shot. It's an insult to the immortal, invincible God. When you come to him, throw away who you are. What you are. Because if you come to him with who you are, he can make you better. You know something? I don't mind giving to people as long as they will still relate to me. I don't mind if my son becomes powerful than me. As long as he's still my son. But the day the son is no more a son, then I feel the pinch of it. That's how life is. So in the same way with God, he doesn't mind how big he makes you. As long as you are relating with him, he can take you higher than any higher. Because he will still use you as a point of reference. That is my product. Give me the course, please. Don't change it. So, so many of us have so many altars. I don't know this man of God. Yes, you don't know me, but you know the one I mentioned. <laughs> His name is Jesus. And that mentality alone can be your altar. Many are built, I will lay down my idols. Thrones I have made. 
and all that has taken my heart I will lay down my idols thrones I have made and all that has taken my heart Lord I will bow to you to know what but you alone I will lay down I will lay down my eye thrones I have made sometimes the throne is pride God, forgiveness. Lord, I will bow to you. Lord, I will bow to you. To honor God. But you alone. Oh. Now, many of us have idols and thrones. And those thrones, nobody sees them, but you know that they are your thrones. And guess what? When we say the name of Jesus, it is that throne like a tennis ball and returns back. Why? Because for God's word to work on you, your heart must be softened. Your heart must be what? Your heart must be what? I think I'm already giving you some nice teachings. The heart must be soft. The heart must be receptive. want you to go to God yourself right now and tell God every throne every idol sometimes the one who has promised you is your idol <laughs> casting crowds lift your voice and pray lifting hands Bowing hearts, that's all I've come to do. Casting crowns, lifting my hands, I'm bowing my heart, is all I've come to do. Casting crowns. Cast it down, cast it down, cast it down, cast it down. Bow that heart down. It's what we come to do. Casting crowns. Casting crowns. Bowing hearts. Bowing lift my hands if I lift my voice 
You see, if I have to stand on my feet, it's not because the pastor said it to, it's because you are the reason. If I have to do anything in this atmosphere, it will not be because the pastor is saying it. I am here to encounter God for myself. You are the reason. Why, why, why? Why I lift my voice? Why I sing to you? Why I sing to you? You are the reason. You are the reason I'm alive today. I am here. I am here to say it's all because. It's all Lord, you are my reason why I'm here. I was not invited. You said no one can come to a fest except you draw him. I came because you wanted me here, Lord. You are the reason. No one can come to me. Jesus speaking. If the Father has not drawn him, you are the reason. Lord, if you don't touch me, I'm not living here today. In the first service in the morning, people went to a family sat down and encountered God and said, If I don't counter you, I'm not living here. You are the reason. You are the reason. You are the reason. You are the reason. My sickness is not a reason. My problem is not a reason. The reason is I came to encounter you. I came to encounter Lord. Debant Oh, 
Lift your voice everyone, everywhere. Pray to your God. Many have been to church, they've never met God. Many are speaking to a God they never know. Thirty-eight years. <laughs> Who have you been talking to all this while? Who have you been praying to all these years? Lift your voice. Lift your voice. Lift your voice. Lord, I don't care who sees me. I don't care who mocks at me. I came to meet you, Jesus. me in Genesis chapter 1 you realize something that the Bible said and darkness was on the face of the deep face of the deep that is something I'm going to deal with called go deeper but you see that the trouble you have in your life is not on the surface don't be deceived it is outside gentility home cry that enemy is connected to something which is in the deep so in second Kings chapter 2 19 the men of the city came to Elisha the prophet and said behold the situation of the land looks pleasant when you look at it but inside it the land is barren the water is bad. You look at this person, looks so beautiful, but the person is dying inside. The situation looks good. Said the, but you see, the thing was in the surface of the deep. But the Bible said the Holy Spirit was also brooding over. No matter how deep the enemy has hidden, 
I'm going to trust God. But hear me, for myself, not for you, for me. You too, you must have your Holy Ghost. Oh, you didn't hear me. You, maybe you can observe what I do and do some, but me too. <laughs> I want to encounter God again. And how does he do it? Until his spirit is brooding over you, God can speak. Man of God, they speak up upon me, nothing happens. They say I'll break through, I'm still in the same level. Yes, nothing happens until the Holy Spirit moves. And can I tell you this? The Holy Spirit will also never move until the blood has spoken. It is the blood of Jesus that gives you access to the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit will lead you to Jesus, who is the word. Then Jesus will lead you to the Father. don't jump this thing, you will die. So I want you to do this. First Corinthians chapter 14 says there are certain things called mysteries. What are they called? I didn't hear you. They are called what? And that mysteries can only be unveiled by speaking in tongues. And I'm not talking about speaking in tongues. Oh God, I need a breakthrough. Nonsense. You don't speak in tongues. You ask for breakthrough. Listen to my message on a date with God. You don't go on a date with God and tell him about the devil and tell him about yourself. Every date is to find out more about a person, not about you. It is the person's quest to know you that you answer. But you don't go talking about you. Or is it true? It's not true. You go to somebody, they say, my father is the president of Ghana, and I'm the dad. That is not a date. That is your bill. And God looks at you quietly. I tell him, witches have developed in my life. Eh? The way the witch, the way the wizard is keeping quiet watching you. But in a real date with God, it's your quest to know him. And it's his quest to know you. And when both of you know each other, by the time you leave, you make a decision that changes your life forever. So, I don't believe in tongue speaking. That is meant for request making or binding demons. I try these tongues, but the demons, they don't hear. So I don't hear. He got bad, every witch in my life. He got bad, bad, bad. So pick it. Stop that nonsense. That tongue, that witch doesn't hear. After you speaking in tongues, they say, devil, go away. Then he can hear and go. Because that devil doesn't understand what you're saying. So I prayed for four hours. That is true. But what did you tell the devil? He saw you with God and ran away. But he will come back because you didn't tell him to go away. But he that speaks in tongues speaks mysteries. There's something in the hidden that will be exposed tonight. If your amen is not good, you better pack your bag and go home. <laughs> we are going to pray. Oh, Pastor, me, I don't speak in tongues, so don't worry. Half a loaf is better than none. Worship him. Sing. Talk to him. But we who speak in tongues, I beg you. Speaking in tongues is like driving in a car. Not speaking in tongues is like walking to my yard. But you arrive. But those of us who speak in tongues, we will get there with more energy than you. A person who speaks in tongues does not speak to men. A person who speaks in tongues, by the time he's done speaking in tongues, the Lord has told him that pass here, do this, sit here, go here, and doors are just open. Ah, how did you do all this? My spirit received understanding when I was speaking to him. 
Lift your voice and begin to talk to him. For the next 10 minutes, lift your voice and speak to the Lord. Precious Holy Spirit. Must be revealed to you as you speak to God. Don't speak about yourself, just begin to speak to Him in another tongue. As the song goes on, as the song goes on, begin to speak in another tongue. You, you, see, if, if you, you cannot hear yourself, you are not bringing it out. You must hear yourself so that your mind will not wander. Begin to speak it out. Begin to blast it out. So that your mind will know wrong. Your mind will not think about something you have left home. That's something you have forgotten. Let it begin to rise. As you speak in mysteries, you are not speaking to anyone, but you are speaking to God. Let your voice be lifted up. your mind roam. It is not time for your mind to roam. But let your mind be focused. As you blast out and you can hear yourself, your mind will be settled here. Let your concentration wherever you are and begin to speak mysteries things that cannot be seen things that men cannot understand Speak it, folks. 
Like nothing is happening, no. <laughs> but there's a stirring of your waters. So, spirit and body to you. So my spirit, don't watch me pray. On us, Lord, brood on us, Lord, 
Breed on us, Lord. Brood on us, Lord. Overwhelm us, Lord. In your presence, Lord. Hear him, Moses. Revealing. Yield it all to you. Yield it all to you. Yield it all to you. I yield it all to you, O Lord. I yield my heart, so spirit, and body to you. I yield it all to you, O Lord. Let these few seconds remaining be like your life depend on it. Spirit, take over. Sweet Holy Spirit, take over. Do as you please, not as I please. Do what you want, not what I want. An encounter with you is all we want tonight. An encounter, an encounter, an encounter, an encounter. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Come on, give the Lord Jesus a mighty clap of friend. If you can take your seat. Do. Let me tell you this. I'm so fired up. And I want to tell you that your Bring it here for me. Bring my puppet here for me. You can leave the other two there. But bring my puppet here. You will understand me that if 
whilst the teaching is going on, I'll be doing it with my worshipers. I can raise any song at any time. I can give a point, and if it's your point, you can decide what to do with it. You can even go home after that. You decide what happens to you in the next two hours. Now, I ask myself this question. What to make somebody meet Jesus? I told you lately, I've stopped preaching now. I, I, I want to talk. So that you don't tell me that homiletics and then dialectics. This one is a conversation. I've wondered how a man will meet Jesus. He will become a millionaire and have business partners who become a millionaire. He will kneel down after that encounter with Jesus and tell Jesus, depart from me because I'm a sinner. And Jesus will look at him and tell him, follow me and I'll make you. And the man will leave all the fish he caught. I'm talking about Peter. And follow Jesus. What is it about Jesus? But it's so difficult these days. People are making two CDs and they won't follow Jesus. <laughs> what will make Peter leave all these things and follow Jesus. And the answer is why I'm here. I'm going to talk to you about what I will call get into the deep. Oh, those of you who came for first service, you will enjoy it better because it's like a continuation from there. You see, if you look at the Bible in Exodus chapter 8, Pharaoh told Moses that, listen, you can go, but don't go too far. Don't go too far. Don't go too far away. Don't get too much involved in this thing called Christ. You go and worship God, but don't go too far. Go where if I need you, I do. You will come. If I can throw my hands for you to backslide, you backslide. Don't go too far. So a lot of us have become Christians, and our life with God is not deep. It is galamse Christianity. The small, small gold. Is what we are mining, surface mining. And that one Kranonado says is illegal. <laughs> but we are Christians and we are happy with the crumbs that we are getting from the surface mining. And unfortunately, it's like in Ghana, we enjoy the surface mining and the foreigners come for the deep mining and they take the deep ones away. So is it with us because the crumbs should have been for the foreigners. And the bigger gold for the deep must be for the Christians. How do I say this? A woman comes to Jesus and asks Jesus, can the keyboard come down a bit for me? I need this banana to come down a bit for me. A woman comes to Jesus and says that, heal my child. And Jesus says, hey, 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 I can't heal you. I didn't come for people like you. You are dogs. And sometimes people think that the anointing is for everybody. Excuse me, it's not for everybody. The fact that I'm anointed to pray for people, that is me I should pray for you. He just said, no, 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 I'm not doing that. Then the woman said, okay. He said, dogs, but when people, masters eat, the children especially, when they eat, they leave the galamse ones. <laughs> they leave the crumbs so that we, the dogs, we take it. It means the woman was saying that even the galamse, they all do galamse and they are rich right? The surface mining people are also okay. So you give us the surface mining will be okay. Unfortunately, the children of God are doing surface mining and the enemies of God are doing deeper mining and they are using their wealth to lambast us because we don't know that we have the right to what God has given us. 
So in the book of Luke chapter 5, you meet a man who met Jesus. And the Bible said he had toiled all night. I don't know about you. He had toiled all night. <laughs> I know people who do all night and they wake up and their life is still the same. My God. They did all night. Where are you coming from? All night. I did 21 days all night. I went to all night at the bridge. I've been doing all night prayer. I wake up every 2 a.m., 3 a.m. I pray. I'm not seeing anything. Peter toiled all night and caught nothing. It is possible. It is, it is possible. I was said, you, it's, it's vain to rise up early, sit up late, and still eat the bread of sorrow because it is not those who work hard that enjoy life. If people work hard to enjoy life, I know people who are working very hard. I know people who pray than me. I people pray. I know people who are more holy than me. Jai. They are the synonym of holiness. If you see that, if you watch a woman like a trinkoma, he looks like a perfect sinner. Long nails, red lipstick, long gown. And when Catherine Coleman is teaching, she will tell you about her childhood stories. And all of a sudden you say, Shh. the Holy Spirit is here the room changes until the Holy Spirit comes he's telling you totally and God used her madly and I know people we can quote Genesis to Revelation people will clap their hands and shout and scream but after the service you realize that you toiled and got nothing and the difference between this set of people is one has met God and one has met man. Peter told all night he had his own boat. Or better still, a ship. He was not a poor man. Peter was not a poor man. He had his own boat, ship. And he and his partners, colleagues, have been fishing all night, caught nothing. And actually, the Bible said that Jesus met them mending their net, which simply means that they caught something, but whatever they caught was gone. You were paid. Where is the money? You work, you labor, they pay you. Is it buying medication? Or what is the money doing? This man catch the fish and the fish has a way of coming through his net. So it's like the, his life was a recycle. You will catch it. The most painful thing sometimes in life is not to miss success or not know how to be successful. You know how to be successful but you are poor. And the one you teach how to be successful is successful. You teach in class. The people pass their exams. The one you, you taught them, you, you failed. And you are wondering, what is this about them that I don't have? Am I talking to somebody? So, whilst he was mending his neck, Jesus came in and said, oh, give me your boat and let me use it. I don't want to talk about it today. He took the boat <laughs> of course, when you have used your boat or your fish and caught nothing, you don't care who you give to. <laughs> what? Have you seen business that is successful that they hand it over before? No, when the business is not successful, anybody who wants to buy it can I tell Tigo how much did they buy it? I hear one dollar. I mean, not successful. They have a lot of debt, so whoever buys this has to clear debt. So you bought debt. So when Jesus said, Give me the boat. He said, uh, oh God, sit, he sit inside and use what they could say. After Jesus had finished teaching, he looked at Peter and said, can I tell you something? Your problem is that as a fisherman, you, go, you don't go deep. Cast your net to the deep. Because that is where you can have a catch. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. What's the difference between catching a fish in the deep? And catching a fish at the surface when it still tears your net. 
Take me to the place. To that secret place. Where I can be with you. You can make me like you. Wrap me in your arms. Wrap me in your arms. Wrap me in your arms. Is that Peter? Your problem is that you are a fisherman that does not go deep. If you read Ezekiel chapter 47, you will see that he took the prophet through the waters. And as he walked through the waters, the waters were to his ankle. And he was seeing Panla, Katashku boys. Then he went deeper into the waters. He began to see big fish. Then he went deeper into the water. The water was to his waist. By the time the water was going to his neck, he was seeing sharks, whales, and bigger fish. Because the miracle you need will determine how much deep you must go. We have a lot of Christians whose prayer topic is bigger than their pocket. I was saying it earlier. Go to the other side of the world and tell them that if they need money they should bring their mother, their father, their brother, their sister. They will tell you that the potency of the person you bring the value of the person you bring in connection to your life will determine the world. You don't sacrifice a goat and become a millionaire. Those ones, it is mother, father, or sister. Is it true? It's not true. Yeah. And they will tell them, don't bath the rest of your life. And they don't bath. They buy all the perfume and the cologne in the world to spray themselves. They won't bath. If they get to a place and water touches them, they can forget the place and not come there again. Because they, they are water done. Tell a believer, sit here for four hours and God will visit you. I can promise you. If his mobile phone doesn't move him, his boyfriend or his girlfriend will call him. It's not true, right? We are in a generation that think that God is on the surface. No! Even the disciples who walked with Jesus for three and a half years, when Jesus died, they had to wait for him for five, 50 days. How many days? 50 days to be endued with the power of the Holy Ghost. How many of us can spend 50 days in the room? We have locked ourselves. We won't go out because we want power. 50 days. And for the time Jesus went to heaven, ascension, they had to be in that part room for 10 days. No going anywhere. And they were waiting for cleaving tongues of fire to fall on their head. And when these people came out, you can see a Peter who was a fear looking up and telling the whole world that this same Jesus that I denied is the same Jesus who died and saved you. And three thousand souls were won. What have we done that I have preached since 1995? I have not seen three thousand souls. It's a serious matter. The next time he went to preach, it was 5,000. The next time, the next one, it was a multitude. They couldn't count. Then the next one is innumerable. Hey, right here. One man, every sermon, he graduates. We will preach. After this service, the next service is reduction sin. I think I'm not speaking the truth. Because sometimes the Holy Ghost looks at you and says, you know how to do it, eh? Do it, let's see. So I'm a fisherman. You threw on a shim. 
you have caught the fish, but the fish is sailing through you. After today, no miracle will pass through your net and vanish again. I said after, oh, I think I'm not preaching to some people here. No breakthrough will come to you and disappear again. If you're the one I'm talking to, shout a big amen. Days waiting for power. Waiting for what? Waiting for what? Peter, Jesus said, launch your net to a place called deep. Some said, Can you go deeper? Most of us, our Christian life is surface Christian. It's so interesting, you know. Fast, fast, this is more. Go to church seven to nine. Close. What are you going to do at home? Sleep, watch, watch football, eat, chat, sleep. So we are fast. And we the pastors, we are doing very well. Seven to nine. Nine to eleven. Eleven to two. And we are collecting the tithes, collecting the offering. And the people are just coming to church. And they are not getting transformed. Prepared for hell. See, I like my church. You know what I like at my church? We close very early. Don't let me insult you. When you watch Chelsea versus Bayern and Menek, and they close, even though you have won, you go and watch the match again. Is it true? It's not true. Yeah, you sit down and watch replay. Because the world is more interested, you are more interested in the world than the things of God. Many people go to church, but they have never um, encountered God. How can you talk about a God you don't know? And unfortunately, some of us who have met him, when we are talking to you about him, you talk and see if you met him just yesterday morning. I've used your boat. You listening to me? Jesus is saying, I'm staying in you. You are the boat. I reside in you. By this level of your life, you can't launch the surface. I can't be in your life and you don't go deep. Because if you don't go deep, you catch shallow fish. And your, your net is sighted. that small fishes can pass through. My big fish cannot get out. And I can see a major miracle coming for the children of God in here because they want to encounter God for themselves. Look at someone say, do you want to encounter God? What did the person say? Many don't want to encounter God. They are like children of Israel. <laughs> Moses, speak to God for us. Moses, speak to God for us and tell him whatever he tells you. Come and tell us. No wonder they did not make it to the promised land. Moses didn't make it right. But later he stepped there in his spirit. But what about the 600,000 men? They never stepped there. Why? Because they never encountered God. You will never go to heaven if you don't know God. He said, Pastor, what are you saying? He said, when he shall appear, we shall be like him and we shall see him as it is. Now, if I see Pastor Francis passing, and in this circumstance, if, if it is far, I'll say, hey, call him for me. I know him from a distance. If you don't know a person, how can you call him when he's passing? Jesus can pass by your house. And because you never know him, you can't talk to him because you never know his Jesus. Before you know the rapture has happened, many are gone and you are still where you are because you never met him. A person you have never met, how would, so, you know, I know Jesus. He has a, um, this thing here. He has a, this thing. They have a picture of him in my room. I want to tell the picture of Jesus in your room is not Jesus. If, let us all bring our pictures. Different faces. The one who you see is Jesus is a movie actor. It's a movie actor you call Jesus. He has even come out and said, stop calling me Jesus. How can your wife or your husband pass by and you never know it is them? 
anybody that I'm connected even from a distance, I will know. If even my eyes is closed, I know how Pastor David climbs the stairs. I know how everybody around me locks my door. My eyes are closed, but my ears can hear. May you never miss an encounter with God. May you not miss an encounter with God. I say, may you not miss an encounter with God. And Pharaoh's mandate is to make sure that you don't go too far. Stay where you are. Be a nice Christian. Read your Bible, pray every day. That's all. I read my Bible, I pray. But there is a way you can live your life. Where like Peter, you can catch fish. And you can begone your partners. And your partners also come and take some of their fish. And you look at everything he has given you. And you tell God that I still prefer my encounter with you than the wealth I have received. Why? Because I'll, as long as I walk with you, I'm going to have a daily... Ah, one day Jesus was walking with Peter and they needed to pay temple tax. Jesus asked Peter the question. I like what Jesus said. Do children pay tax? He said, no. Isn't it foreigners? He said, yes. Because as a citizen, they were not supposed to pay tax. Temple tax. He, the owner... I look at Peter and say, you know what? Take your hook. Go to the this thing. Catch fish. The exact money we need for every problem is there. Take it out. Go and pay. All the days that Jesus worked with Peter, there was never a time that was a financial need. Actually, Judas was a thief, but there was never a need. Much as Peter, Judas was always stealing the money, there was always enough. If it is five loaves and two fish, it can be able to take care of 5,000. This is the man that Peter decided to leave everything and follow. And here we are! I wrote something in my notes. And hear me carefully. Your boss pays you for two reasons. The time you spend on his vision and the time you spend with him. Your boss. Is it true? It's not true. Oh, maybe in Ghana we are not like that. In Europe and where they pay you according to hours. The time you spend with your boss or his vision will determine how much you are paid. True or false? How much time have you spent with God that you won't pay? How much time have you spent on his purpose for your life that you won't pay? You are quiet. Oh. And that's his spending time. I don't mean coming to church. No, man. Coming to church is one of the times. I'm talking about having a one on one intimate time with him. Talking to him like a friend. Talk to your friend. When they got was angry with the Jews. He said, hey, you don't respect her. Eh? Aaron, Miriam, you don't respect. You think you are prophets. You know the difference between you and Moses? I speak to Moses and he clarified it as a man speaks to his friend. So, Brother Francis, how are you? How is SEC? Are you okay? I love your dressing. Is it the dress you wore for your wedding? And it looks the same. This is how God speaks to a a Moses. And when it comes to Aaron and Miriam, they must see vision, television, dream. And God said, you think you are all the same? You think you, because you dream. Sometimes people say that we are all children of God. We are children of God. We are children of monkey. You are, you are even insulting yourself because even though we are all children of God, some people's level of relationship is such that if you even speak a little thing against them, you are in trouble. Because God said, as for Moses, I speak face to face with him like a friend speaks to a friend. Let's read. Where is it on the screen? Is that what? I speak with him face to face, even plainly and not in dark sayings. He sees the form of the Lord. Ah, why then were you not afraid to speak? He said, I speak to him. The one that said, I speak to him like a friend. I speak to him like a friend, a friend, a friend. Some say, Pastor, is it possible to speak to God as a friend? He says, it's so easy. But it doesn't come cheap. 
It hasn't come out. It hasn't come cheap. There is no important person on this earth that you see the person easily. It's about God there can easily go to. Forget it. Most of the people we think we have met, we think is God is not God. I'll prove it to you. The, 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 oh God. The, who gave the Ten Commandments to Moses? You all say God. But read the Bible. Galatians tells you it was angels. It was angels that gave it to Moses. The burning bush was an angel. Acts chapter 7. It was an angel that was talking to you. <laughs> There's something called the angel of his presence. You've not gone anywhere. It took Moses over, oh God, 80 days. How many days? To get to that level with God where he met God. Spent 40 days without food and water on the mountain. And God, when he was coming down from 40 days fasting, what did God give him? To his angels, rules and regulations. What are rules and regulations? Rules and regulations help you to have the mindset of the one who is in charge of your life. You can know a man by the rules he gives you. I might not miss the man, but I can know his rules and understand his thoughts. Is it true? It's not true. The first 40 days of Moses with God, Exodus 32, it was just for 10 commandments. When he came back and Apple had messed up and he had destroyed the Ten Commandments, he went back to God again. Another 40 days. And that's the one he told God that if I found favor in your sight, show me now your glory. He had never met God before. He had del- you can be delivering people, oh man of God, and you don't know God. He brought them out of the Red Sea. He brought them out of Egypt. He, d- he made manna fall. He did all kinds of miracles. But he never met God. He didn't know him. Don't be deceived by the miracles we do that we know God. It is here, Exodus 33. Give me the 33. That God said, give it to me. Where he said, I speak to you face to face. Give it to me. And Lord spoke to Moses face to face as a man speak unto his friend. That was the second 40 days of no food, no water. So you, you think that you can do Jacobaco, God, up here, up here. I say up here, up here. And God said, my son, I've come. You are a fool. Go and do that to your president and see what the soldiers will do to you. If you meet, try and do that to me and see what my protocol will do to you. Some of the prayers, after we finish, angels come to slap us for disrespect. <laughs> now, if God can defend Moses to that level, I wonder how angels will defend our God. You know, there are angels whose duty is to protect their throne. And they don't just give you access because you are faster than you are prayed. Have you gone home? Because you know one, one thing, the whole world spiritually, demonically, satanically, angelically, Holy Spirit filly. They all know one thing, that whoever encounters God, you are done. Your life has changed forever. So Satan's number one agenda is you can never, you must not encounter God. Anything you put on your way to prevent you from meeting God, you will do it. Enoch was a man. He walked with God. He has not come back. He went on a trip with God. If you read the book of Enoch, it will tell you that he came back after a while and nobody could look at his face. Nobody could look at his face. What is this that people meet God? When Moses came down from meeting God, nobody could look at his face. Somebody can look at your face and insult you. Master Unyanya, I mean, why? You can look at somebody's face and insult the person. Look, if somebody looks at you and insult you, go and do waiting. It's the highest form of insult. At least let them insult you at your back. But not face to face. Am 
I teaching here? You go home. Am I teaching here? So, so what is happening is that Satan through Pharaoh is saying that you can serve God, right? But don't do what? Don't go. Don't go what? You are taking this church thing too serious. You are, I was saying this in the first service that you can get up in the morning, 5 a.m. to 8, going to play football. Can also in the evening, 4 to 6, go to play football. Nobody will tell you you are taking this football too, too serious. And every day, you go to the park and play football. Every day. You have your football boots. When you are going, it's in your armpit. You are going. You get there, you put it on. You play. Every day, if the football booth gets spot, you buy another one. Nobody is even paying you, but you have hope one day that you get a team. Even at your age of 45, you think somebody will buy you, you have hope. You have hope. With your pot belly, you still have hope that one day Chelsea will come and buy you. <laughs> is it true? It's not true. You still have hope. And yet, if you start time with God, people will tell you that these days, you are taking this God thing too personal. Let me tell you this. If you don't take God personal, he will never take you personal. It takes intentional for God to be intentional with you. It takes deliberate for God to be deliberate with you. Hello? Oh, I, I didn't hear you. Hello? Look, I want to sing deep. I want to go deep. Someone say deep. I didn't say deep. Say deep. Say deep. What is deep? Let me tell you this. I want to take time. <clears throat> you see, all the years that Moses opened the Red Sea, pillar of fire, pillar of cloud, all those times, manna, he did not know God. And you can be talking to people about a person you don't know. First service, I told you this. Two people brought their mother out of respect. They went to bring their mother to Jesus. And they told the mother, the mother said, Jesus, I greet you. This is my son, James. And this is my son, John. When you go to your kingdom, I want one to sit on your left, one to sit on your right. Jesus said, okay, no problem. But can they drink of the cup I'm about to drink? Would they suffer the thing I'm going to suffer? So Jesus advised them. Then someone also came to Jesus. And in Matthew chapter 16, Jesus was saying, if you want to follow me, take up your cross and die and follow me. Jesus has advised nicely two things he has said to people. Number one, if you want to follow me, die, right? Take up your cross. He told James and John and their mother, you must drink the cup of suffering. Is it true? Now, this is Jesus. You too, you are now a human being. And as a human being, you are going to face the devil. Before you face the devil, you must encounter God for yourself. And because he wants to encounter God, the first thing he also does is that he goes to the Garden of Gethsemane and he tells God, Taste this cup of suffering for me. Hey, you, are you not a preacher? Are yeah, you not the one who preached yesterday in church that no, if you can't take this cup, are you not the one who said carry the cross? Why are you in secret prayer? Pray. Look, everybody who is not successful, if you are not successful publicly, there should be a private time that you negotiate for your success. You, you, you didn't hear me. <laughs> we talk about it. It's easier said than done. You, you can preach it. God will prosper you. God will make you big. God will make you great. I want you to go and realize that there's nothing to eat. That's why you know that you preach him, but you don't know him. This is the reality of the Son of God, Jesus, on earth. And 
on earth. He goes to the garden of Gethsemane. Begins to pray. Father, if it is not possible for this cup to be taken from me, let it take or take it away. I bind every power of the enemy I send against me. I won't die. I will live to declare the word of God. I will live, Lord. I will have a couple of God, are you there? No answer. God doesn't answer every prayer. He only answers his will. Do you know how many times Elijah prayed that people that God should kill him that he didn't die? Moses prayed that God kill me. God, I should kill you. The next time he was alive. You see, most often, sometimes when you are praying that you should die, God is happy to hear that prayer. But he will not let you die because that is the prayer he wanted you to pray. Now that you want to die, I can now use you. You are too known. Now that you are thinking of death, let me resurrect you and take you places. Because now you have realized that you can't do it. All great men have encountered will tell you there was a time in their life they contemplated suicide. They wish they had died. That wish for death is a place that you must go to encounter God. Death to self. And at the Garden of Gethsemane, here comes Jesus. He goes along with Peter, James, and John. Which people? Special assistant, PA, administrative then day, prayer director. Let us go. And when they get there, here's Jesus. First hour, Matthew 26. He's praying, God, take this cup of suffering from me. And first I was telling you that if we're a Christian and you've not prayed three hours, on the will of God. Forget it. You are a useless Christian. You are still living in the flesh. This is Jesus, our role model. He goes to Gethsemane and starts praying. I don't want to die, Jesus. I don't want to die, God. Take the cup of suffering from me. Oh God, take it from me. Take it from me. He goes to see the prayer warriors. They are asleep. Why are they asleep? Because they heard you, him praying to God that take this cup of suffering from him. As for taking the cup, it's easy. We have knives, so let's sleep. We don't need prayer. There are certain things, it is not a prayer topic. People around you can never support what is not of God because it is not a prayer topic. They were asleep because when it comes to taking the cup, we can fight. One hour gone. He comes back to the disciples. He was still sleeping. He goes. Second hour comes. Then it comes the third hour. By the third hour, he has changed his prayer topic. Not my will, but your will be done. And as soon as I said your will be done, angels came and fed him. Angels don't feed your ideas. I beg you. Angels don't push your vision. Angels don't push your, 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 your activity. They only do the will of him that sent them. Am I talking to somebody here? Am I talking to somebody here? Please, are you here or you've gone home? Three hours. By the third hour, this same man who was praying, I don't want to go through it. I don't want to suffer. I don't want to go through this. I don't go through it. Now he has accepted the will that when Peter even takes a knife to cut the ear, he takes the ear and puts it back. When the people say, who are you? Who is Jesus? He said, I am. They all fell down under the power of the Holy Ghost. They woke up and still said, this is me. Take me. Now I am yielding to your will and your way. Why? Because it takes three levels. Some say three levels. I didn't hear. Say three levels. I'm not here. Say three levels. I want to hear. Say three levels. To kill the flesh. Those three levels, if you don't go through it, you can never meet God. In the tabernacle, I ask that they should put it on the screen. I hope they could. In the tabernacle, I sent it to Reverend Okra. I hope he got it for you. There were the outer court, the inner court, 
in the holies of holies. And guess what? The mercy seat was in the holies of holies. Stop asking for mercy when you are not in the holies of holies. You let me take time. There was the outer court. Look, the whole tabernacle was rectangular in nature. And they had put cloth all around it. And there was an entrance that you enter into it. Now, when you enter, it's what we call born again. What is God called? What is that called? But I know something. When you become born again, you can't go back. First, I was teaching it. The most painful thing is a, a, the most painful, useless believer is a believer who loves God with all his heart, can sin, and yet can succeed. You love God, you can't sin. But the things people do to make money, you can't do. Am I teaching here? So, the first place is the outer court. Some say the outer court. In the outer court, you do this, you ask. Some say ask. Jesus said, ask, seek, and knock. The outer court, you ask. Every majority of Christians are in the outer court. Lord, heal me. Lord, deliver me. Lord, save me. Lord, do that. Class one Christian. Let me tell you this. There is no way you can enter the holies of holies and you are still sick. It's not possible. That you are still poor. It's not possible. By the time, no why people don't get healed in churches. They come to church thinking about their sickness. But you must come to church thinking about him. They come to church thinking about their trouble. But you must be there thinking about him. Am I teaching here at all? God doesn't give healing. No, sorry. Quote me well. God doesn't have healing. His health. It is the residue of his health that heals you. So when you have him in you, you walk in health. God doesn't have prosperity. He is Jehovah the Jira. He is the provider. So when you have him, you succeed naturally. So it's the children, it's the, it's the slave, the foreigners who has given me. But a child of God doesn't ask. He has. And when, look, my daughter, Erasa, if I see her picking food from the ground, I'll beat her. That is not for her. That's for the dogs. To God, picking crumbs is an insult to his fatherhood over your life. Those are for unbelievers. <laughs> you do hear that one. The crumbs! Are for the visitors. Most of when we do service like this, as those who work in my office, and I lay hands and we all go home, they run away from me. This afternoon, Mrs. Century was giving me a book. Give me the book. I said, put the book down. And let me pick. Oh, I want, I want to hold the book. No, 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 no. You put the book down, and I'll pick the book. Because when I meet them, ah, then I pour it on. I give it. I give them the anointing. You there, you go. Then you fall down. Then you clean yourself. Thank you, man. I'm going to go home. No, no, no. Those people, no, no. Sometimes they can be there. Four hours, they're under the power. I lock them. They should enjoy it. I'm not talking to somebody here. Oh, you go home. Look at some. Are you still looking for cramps? Oh, God, deliver me. Oh, God, save me. I am fasting these three days. So, that Lord, you give me a husband. You? Cramps? Let me never see you design cramps again. Cramps is not for the children. Cramps 
is for the dogs. So Christians are asking, go to our prayer meetings. Prayer requests is all asking. It's all asking. Am I teaching well? Do you like my conversation? Yeah. Then you enter. That is what the first hour Jesus prayed. He was praying against God's will. Most of what we ask is against God's will. Then the next level, second level was when the Bible said, seek. Someone says, seek. Some say, seek. And the Bible said, I thought those of you came earlier. That the Bible said, I talk, ask God a question. He said, God, why? Why? Why is it that? He said, I should call on you when you answer me and show me great and mighty things that I don't know. I'm calling you to answer. He said, you know the plans you have for me. Plans to prosper me and to bring me to a good end. What I'm not happy. He said, Francis, when you read your Bible, read it completely. I said, God, what is it? He said, read it to us. I said, you will seek me and find me when he search for me with all your heart. I said, God, I don't understand. He said, the reason why I've not given you the blueprint for your life, for your dream, is that you don't search for me with all your heart. Whilst you are searching for me, you are on your phone. You are on Facebook. He said, when you search for me with all your heart, you only read verse 11. Give me verse 11 of NIV. Jeremiah 29 verse 11. He said, I have the plan. Say he has the plan. Look, God has a plan for your, um, your health. He has a plan for your marriage. He has a plan for your business. He has a plan for everything you must be on it. He had a plan of God in his hands. He said, I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you, not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. But why is the plan not coming? He doesn't give you the plan because you ask for it. He gives you the plan because you seek him. Then you will call upon me and I'll come and pray to you and come and pray to me and I'll listen to you. But he's not giving you the plan because he can hear your prayer, but he can't give you the plan. Because he said the next verse, he said, You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. Now, how many of us seek him with all our heart? The way you chase things, if you chase God that way. Some of us, you make God so jealous and God is a jealous God. The way you chase the girl until I marry you, I won't give up. You are chasing, buying jewelry, borrowing money to take her to the restaurant. They brought you a list to marry this girl. You can't afford it, but because of that, you took three jobs. Jacob, just to marry one right. It's not true, right? But when it comes to God, God, you know, I love you. But you know, I care. God said, I don't, I don't, I didn't hear that. As for your prayer, I've heard it. But there's something about you. You've not sought for me with all your heart. Your heart. So God gives you a thing like he gave to Peter. Your, your fish, you've caught a lot of fish in your boat. He said, will you follow me? That's a person that wants his heart. Can I give you everything? I will give you all my worship. You are looking at worship. And there's a woman taking camera. Standing there. And you are sitting at the back watching her bottles. And you are saying, I will give you all my worship. God is watching you. I will give. You are watching what? So you came to church, but you, you left with last. So, 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 what should I have done? He said, when you get to your prayer, close the door. So what is the door? Close your eyes. I will give you all. I went to a church. They, they gave me a seat, a very big church. They gave me a seat. The seat has an open space like this. And the lady sitting in front of me, I'm aware was showing. 
I asked the protocol, is there no seat? He said, no other pastor seat. The seat there is for the ordinary church members that can say, today I'm an ordinary church member. Move my seat. So, man of God, is there a problem? I didn't want to tell the usher what I'm seeing. I said, no problem. I feel in my spirit that I must change my seat. Say, man of God, there's no seat that I'm going home. Hey! Nice! Everything nice. And this lady too, when the preaching is going on, she will sit down. Hallelujah! Then the doctor said, take your phone and take a picture so that you show it to the pastor after church. I said, so that you be on my phone. I changed my seat. Whenever you are getting to the worship room, Satan has a way of distracting you. Is it true or is it not true? Somebody will call you. Somebody will they think, what am I eating tomorrow? Tomorrow is a holiday. Yeah. Yeah. If I don't call this boy, it looks like the food will not come home. That's when all the satanic problems are coming to your brain. So God, I need a plan. Let me tell you this. My pastor said, they'll tell you. I, I called them to my office at the end of last year. And I showed them the blueprint of my life from 1995. The plan God gave me. Is it true? Were you there now? Were you there? I showed them. This is what God says. This is when we have to build. This is when we build our university. This is when we do that. These are the businesses we open. It's a blueprint. I have it. So when I see you are not part of me, I know. I have the plan. When you have a plan, you know who is part of your life, who is not part. And you don't waste your life, your life on people who are not part of you. Life, it cannot be experimented. When Moses encountered God, God opened the heavens and gave Moses the tabernacle plan. How heaven looks like. He gave him the blueprint. This is how you must build on it. God has designed your life, your home, your marriage. Has he unveiled it to you? Moses built this thing way back before Jesus was being born. Look at the white around it. Jesus, the perfect man. It's all white. Holiness. God told him how to do it. Look at the pillars. I don't have time to teach about it. Made of acacia wood, incorruptible flesh. Sitting wood. Overlaid with pure gold. The nail that held, I wish they can bring it close. The nail that held the, the wood and the rope to the ground. 50% must go into the earth and 50% must come out because Jesus' hand will be on the cross. Part of the nail will be on his hand and part of the nail will be on the wood. God gave all that measurement. Moses had not met Jesus. He had not met God yet, but God gave him a blueprint of how the Messiah will look like. Where is the blueprint of your dream? And we are wasting our years experimenting you would date this lady five years. It won't work. Then you start another one. Experiment. Yeah. <laughs> Am I teaching you? Encountering God. After this, you see this whole big place? This is the whole body of Christ. It's on the screen. I don't know whether you can see where you are. It's big. That's where you wash your hands. You kill a sacrifice, you kill an animal, the blood washes you. You wash your hands, and there's a mirror there. You see your face in the mirror. Whatever is wrong with you, you wash it. And many people have been this, like the man at the pool of Bethesda for 38 years. Like the man at the beautiful kid for over 40 years. He never entered the church. The best that people would do to him is to put him at the gate. He never entered. Many have never entered Christ. They have been in a building. When I see people who want to receive text message before going to church, I know they have not encountered God. Me, my wife, Pastor David, Pastor Beto, they have known me longest in this place. I have a mate here. Yeah, he was in my area. I slammed down. We tell you how bad I was. We used to play football together. Crazy boy. He would tell you, I was that type. When I became born again, 
please listen to me. I was crazy for God. I didn't have time for any nonsense. They said I have HIV because I was living a life of fasting and prayer. I didn't want to waste my time on Pilolo, CCCC, Nanako. I needed the blueprint of my life so that I can live it. Look at us. You will be roaming through church. Today you are a chorister. Tomorrow you are a protocol. Tomorrow you are this. Tomorrow you are that. Tomorrow you are... I didn't have anybody to call me. Friends, have you prayed? Have you fasted? Actually, the day I finished school, I carried mattress. My student mattress that I finished school with. I carried my bag, water bottle. My mom asked me, where are you going? To the forest to pray. Are you okay? I said, I'm all right. I pray. And my mom asked me, Francis, are you okay? Do you want to go to America? I can get you a ticket. I said, I don't want to. What's wrong with you? Is it money? I'll give it to you. I said, it's not true. There was something. And my mom, my friend, he said, we're not poor in the area. We're one of the rich people respected in the area. And it will shock you that my mom thought I needed something. But there was something I needed that my mother cannot give me. My father cannot give me. My friends cannot give me. My neighbors cannot give me. And that is some of the things is what you are seeing today. And there's something that nobody can give you. But God, that is why when you are thirsty and they give you Coca-Cola, you still say water because nothing can replace water. You are roaming. You are still in the action stage. And in John chapter 4 verse 6, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. The three ways. Ask, seek, knock. I'm the way, the truth, and the life. So the way is the heart entrance into the world the tabernacle but let me tell you entrance is not enough Jesus said I'm the way then he said I'm the truth you know that if we John chapter 14 verse after this statement they wanted to stone Jesus you know why they wanted to stone Jesus because this statement meant he was the tabernacle when he said I'm the way the truth they wanted to stone him because they understood because interesting the entrance the first entrance oh can I have it on the screen the first entrance was called the way the entrance into the holy place was called the truth. And the next entrance into the next place was called the life. When Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one goes to the Father but me. The Jews understood that he was saying that he is the body of Christ. And so they wanted to stone him. See the first entrance, that is it. That's what we are doing. I and out. By slide coming. By slide coming. Because let me tell you, there is no way you can enter the Holy of Holies and be the same. And the painful thing is, son, I was telling you, it's like Zachariah. Oh, Zachariah, you are the high priest. You go into the Holy of Holies once a year, but you don't have a child. You go into the Holy of Holies, you have everything. One day he's dead doing your grocery, 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 the Lord be with you, I'm with that spirit. Let us pray. Amen. Hey, oh, dear, the Lord unto the Lord. The mm-hmm. angel said, Zachariah. He said, Who is he? he said, You are about to give birth. And the name of the child be called John. He said, Don't tell me any nonsense, yo. You see, you can be ministering to the Lord, but you don't believe your miracle. You can be in the Holy of Holies. He's there ministering. And an angel is speaking to him. He said, hey, hey, please, don't tell me that. Like The angel realized that the place they are standing is too holy. If they don't shut this boy's mouth and he continues to talk as a priest, if you what God wants to do, he cannot do. He said, shut up. And the guy could not talk again. Because in the, when you get a certain place with God, be careful what you say. Now let me go deep. I don't have time. So he enters the first place, which is the seeking. The second place, the first place is asking, seeking. The way, the truth. Now the truth, you go there and you meet the candlestick. That place, you see that they've covered it. The inside this room, there are two rooms inside there. There are two rooms inside there. And there is no sunlight there. There is no sunlight there. The light there is the candle. The light in that place is the seven golden candlesticks. And the Bible said the spirit of man is the candle of the Lord. Searching. Let me tell you this. When you are in that accord, you search God with your body. But when you get into the next place of seeking, you don't search with your body. You search with your spirit. You see, they've shown it, the inside. You see the first entrance, blue. There's a second entrance. Now, the first, the second entrance is what we call truth. 
That's the place you seek. You are going for the blueprint of your life. You are going for the blueprint of your life. How many of you want to have the blueprint of your life? People will run away from you like that. And when they go, it will be painful. It's like we are thanking God. Good radiance. Hey. When Judas was going, Jesus was happy. He said, my friend, you betray me with a kiss. How was he so happy? He had encountered God. He was waiting for him to do what he has to do. Am I teaching somebody here? Am I teaching somebody here? Say truth. Say truth. And Jesus said in John 8, 32, is the truth that makes one free. At that level, you know demon can I repeat it. That place, if you enter where your spirit is in the place, no demon, that is where a true Christian doesn't need deliverance. How? First Corinthians chapter 2, is this verse number 10 or so? He said, the spirit searches all things. Yeah, the deep things of God. It's, it takes your spirit and says, we cannot spirit search it, but the spirit of man is what God uses to search. So it's just that you go to Google and you go every alley. You see my YouTube. You see my everything. You see my everything. You must also see people who are insulting me. So be careful. Because it's not everything that you put on Google that is correct. But guess what? If you know some things about me, you can easily discern which one they are writing which is true. Oh, is it true or is it not true? Oh, I'm not talking to somebody at all. So, okay. But God has revealed them to us through his. For the spirit searches all things. Yes, the, the spirit doesn't search the right way things. Your name is Francis Jonah. Your other name is called Ella. Master, we you know. Sit down. That thing, it doesn't put food on your table. It increases your faith in me to know that I'm a man of God. So, those are not deep things. The deep things is when someone can look at Saul and say you are a king. Since the day you set forth from your house to this place, God told me to put this foot down, the tie of the cow down, because you are going to be the next king. And Saul will not campaign. Not just our politician pastors who said this will be president. And they say, why did you want to be loose? The day they were voting, Saul was hiding in the bush. They voted him to power and they had to go and look for the one they voted for. And the prophet told him, then someone said, Saul said, how can these things be? He said, you don't know. As you go, you meet a company of prophets. You meet people who are carrying gold. You meet this. You meet people who are serving communion. Take the communion. Don't join the people with gold. He taught them that you meet a company of prophets. Join them and you shall become another man. That is first much of the ten. You shall become another man. He taught him how to get. He, so Saul didn't just, someone didn't just prophesy. He had the blueprint of what some Saul needed to do to cause the prophecy to come to pass. That is what we call a man who knows the deep things of God. I see that you are going to be a millionaire. What is the way forward? Keep praying. God will do it. Wait a minute. You don't know deep things. A man who knows deep things can sense. As people are very close to me, I can call and say, hey, don't take that step. Don't push here. Pass here. This is the profession you are supposed to do. These are the steps you are supposed to do. Why do I know some of these things? Because the spirit searches and it searches the deep. And everything that is called deep are things you don't know. Peter, the fish you have been looking for, they are in the deep. The spirit of man is the lamb of God, searching the inner depths of his heart. So when you get into that, you see that if your heart has been going to chase girls or chase men, we tremor and do things. As you enter, you wash your hands, you wash this, you can as you decide like today, I want to enter the holy place. So that your spirit will reroute. You know, Google, Google rerouting the map. You enter at that place, you don't leave this sun. You don't need this light. The light you need is your spirit. The spirit will bear witness with your spirit. 
that we are the sons of God. But please, that place, before you get there, this is by this time, you are, in, you are not less than two hours of prayer. Two hours. But you've not arrived. Yeah, yeah, was wrong. Oh, to that is why you are still where you are. That is why you are still where you are. This morning, first service, we closed. I told them, take the offering. You can put it down. Take it home. Be close. People are still sitting down. People prayed for two hours without knowing they prayed for two hours. Ask them. The pictures you are seeing on social media, they, were, they are the ones who stayed behind. People, don't go. Don't go. What are you going to do? Around that place, food. Your spirit doesn't eat what you Let me give you an example. Do you know that when you are doing dry fasting, first day is difficult, second day is difficult. By the third day, you are used to, your body is used to, you don't feel hungry again. But the first two days are very, very dangerous. Interesting. You see, people are shocked. I don't know if you have done three days dry before. By the third day, you are not feeling hungry again. Interesting. You don't feel hungry again. But because you've told yourself you want to break, you want to eat, but you are not hungry. I just finished one. You are not hungry. That is the time your body starts looking for the fat in your body. And you are squeezing it out to feed your system. It's after seven days that you begin to feel real hunger. Again. Am I talking to somebody here? Are you, are you here with me? How many of you have prayed for three hours non-stop before? Three hours non-stop. I'm not talking about that is no prayer. Please, oh, that is a waste of time. If you have a demon, if I spend time with God and I come, out in Jesus' name, you go. I don't waste time. I don't waste time with you. You are wasting time two hours binding one witch. Oh, what bomb? Oh, free. Pastor Charles, your, your business area. Sometimes somebody calls you with a problem with the PC. He says, switch on the PC. He said, but, but you are not here. I said, I know what is wrong. Switch it on. What appears there? Say, this and this is right, right in the, okay. Press F this. He presses. Okay, put this and this code. The code. Enter, enter. He says, see there. He says, how did you do it? <laughs> the thing is in your spirit. It's not the body. That must be there. Your spirit already knows. So when a man's spirit has caught the anointing, you don't need to be physically at a present location to solve problems. When somebody's even th- breaking their trouble, when the devil is up, when the devil starts moving, you say, I know this kind of devil. I've seen that devil before. I know how to solve this problem. I pass here and the devil pass here. So when they come and tell you that the devil has set a trap for you here, you are going to suffer. You are going to do this. You laugh. Why do you laugh? You have the key. You say, one, two, three, move. One, two, three, move. They see the trap. It doesn't work. You pass through it. It doesn't harm you. And he says, ah, we set the trap. He went through it. Why is that he's not suffering? He has the code and the key to decode the code of the enemy. Please take your seat. One day, a lady got pregnant. The practicality. What the high priest or the fetish priest of Akunedi the son. And they said the girl should die because of the pregnancy. And the girl came to us. And they killed the baby. The baby came back to life. And when the baby was born, they paralyzed the lady. So I sent Pastor Tony there. Of Angkor somewhere. And when Pastor Tony got, I said, give the lady water. I prayed on phone. There and then the lady got up. Why? At that place, you are in to know the truth. And when somebody tells you that 
You set your spirit. What kind of juju is this? Okay, is it self inflicted or man inflicted or demonic inflicted? Okay, demonic inflicted, this is how you solve it. Because you walk in the truth. So, you know what Satan has done to a lot of us? We are going to church, but we never know the truth. A man with the truth always will have an answer to every problem. The worst thing the enemy can do to me is to give me a problem. You know why? Because that makes me come out better. I don't know what has happened. They brought us water bill. One man, 2,500. I don't know what, what we do here. One man, 2,500. I said, this is time for my boho. I can't pay 2,500 a month. Three months can do a bubble. I said, Kai, I wasn't ready. But this situation moves me to a level that I don't need that wahala again. Because I realize any time we are about to do Feast of Miracle, that Friday, they come and inspect and want to cut our water. If you, if you pay, they will cut. So that we will come and beg them. I said, this demon, you are finished. I drew bubble. Now from today, come and cut. So someone said, Pastor, what did you do? This Friday, I've not dug the ball hole yet. I put the jerry can there. We bought water to one of the ganasses to fill it. And got water pump. Water is flowing in the house. I don't mind them. You see, when you know what to do, Satan can kill everybody. By Jesus, you will escape. Satan can kill everybody. Moses, you will be in the house of Pharaoh and he's killing people. And you, Moses, you are in the house of Pharaoh. The problem you think is a challenge is just a door to your next level. But you don't know the plan. So you see like it's trouble. It's not a trouble. It's a challenge. Listen, a lot of the prayers you've gone to prayer comes to pray. The angels back off and they watch you disgrace yourself. He said, you go through the fire, I'll be with you. He said, God, take me from this fire. If Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego had not gone through fire, we will be mentioning their names today. If Daniel had not gone through the lions then, we will be mentioning Daniel's name today. You, you want to jump the lions then? Then how will you mention your name tomorrow? You are like Jesus. You don't want the cup of suffering. Who should drink it? I was teaching the first service. Are you angry with me? Am I solving your problems? Don't worry. I'll, I'll demonstrate it very soon. In the Garden of Eden, Eve, the devil came to Eve, and the Eve went to Adam, and Adam ate the forbidden tree, right? Before the Garden of Gethsemane, the devil came to Peter. Peter went to talk to Jesus. And when Peter spoke to Jesus, Jesus said, Satan, get thee behind me. Right? But even though he said, Satan, get thee behind me, the thing became a prayer topic. The Satan was gone, but the seed of don't die was planted. So Jesus, who came to this earth to die, was now binding a demon that doesn't exist. Many of us are dealing with certain things we call a demon when there is no demon. It is an idea somebody has so into it. Hey, a prophet told you. Wait, wait a minute. Which prophet is that? First Kings 19. Elijah killed all the bad prophets. And Jezebel sent messengers. Every messenger of Jezebel to your life, let them be aborted in the name of Jesus. May they not arrive in your dream. May they not arrive in your home. May they not arrive in your office. If you are the one I'm talking to, give the Lord a mighty clap of in here. So Jezebel sent messengers. Go and tell Elijah that me to our cut off his head. Come and see a whole prophet. Elijah, the one 
who was carried by chariots of fire. He was running. He ran. Ah, left his servant. He forgot his church. He forgot all his church. Ran ah, and God met him. Said, "What are you doing under this um, this broom tree, juniper tree? But it's another version. It's a broom tree. What are you doing under this broom tree?" Said. Jezebel is after me. Jezebel is not after you. Jezebel is in her house. She is not after you. Jezebel can't come after you. But Jezebel has sown a seed in your spirit. And that seed in your spirit, you need to take it to the garden of Gethsemane. It has become a stronghold in you. And tell God, I can't take this turn. The seed that Jezebel has sown in me must be uprooted. I want to go on with your will. If you are clapping, clap better for Jesus. The all night is about where you go. All night. I say, I say, because of all night, your marriage has collapsed. Every night, you are going to all night to bind demons that are fighting your husband. The day when you leave, another woman comes to the room because you feel that. Say, so Pastor, but you do all night. I do all night. But if you come and tell me that your husband says, and your husband says, I say, stay at home. Do the all night at home. Cook for him. Give him all the food he wants to eat, both spiritual and physical. Amen? Amen. And that is the truth. I said, that is the what? The truth. That prayer meeting is not the truth. Let me tell you this. The blood, I told you in the beginning, will lead you to who? The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will lead you to who? Jesus. Who is the truth? And the Jesus will lead you to what? To God. You can't jump any of these people. Did, did, am I teaching somebody here? Or oh, I should close? Oh, if you like, I'll close you. I'll just pray and then we close. That is the problem, huh? No more theater, no more sorry. No beg you need to You go to school, sit in front of lecturers. They will give you books to read. After four years, you say you are a lawyer. You are a lawyer. You didn't fall down, but you are a lawyer. And you say, I put to you. And when you put to people, it is put to. Pastor, when will you let me fall down? And I'm about to do jiggy, 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 jiggy. As for the falling down, it is easy. I can let you go down right now. That is the easiest of my problem. But that demon that left you and is standing at the junction, the trotter you sit in, is waiting for you. He's a next door neighbor. You are who you are yesterday. Today and forevermore. What you say is what you do. Sing it for me. You never change, you never fail. You are faithful to the end. Faithful God, I worship you. Come on, I can't both see it anyway. I worship you. the truth. He's too faithful to fail me. He's too faithful to disappoint. You've proven yourself in my life. Ah, that is the truth. You come to realize. Sing it again. You are too faithful to fail me. And you're too faithful to disappoint me. You are proving yourself. You've proven yourself in my life. And I've come to realize. Listen. 
When we finished the first service powerfully, I went to the room and the devil said, you're too low. Today people will not come for the service. I said, what? He said, they won't come. So let them pack small chairs. I said, pack more. And I called the person who gives chairs. I said, I need more chairs. Give me 50 more. So currently this church, we have 700 chairs. <laughs> including what we have in the other auditorium. That's excluding children's chair. I said, devil, I like this nonsense you are telling me. Then I called. Call me Pastor Victor. Call me Pastor David. I've said they should go and bring more chairs. We are not renting. No. It's our own. We bought it. They should add it. You see, when the devil tells you nonsense, show the devil where your power lies. Years ago, I bought a car for my wife and something funny happened. They said they were taking the car. I've paid some. I've told my wife. She's pregnant. I've taken a picture. Shown her the car. She says she likes it. They came for the car. What a disappointing man of God. You can't disappoint your pregnant wife like that. I went to town and looked for the latest model of the same car. I said, sweetheart, I refuse that car for you because it's too old. I want a brand new one. And I bought a latest for her. Because when the devil slaps you, eh, when the devil makes you poor, show him how rich you are. refuses you this go for the best because you are going to for the deep I, I won't drop it I won't drop it I won't drop it Jacob you can give me the wrong wife but I'll still marry the one I want to marry I think I'm not preaching to somebody here our first building that we designed was not like this it was too small they came we were about to start I said that one is too small I said, ah. I said, I have outgrown that vision. This is bigger, 2,000. Now, this is too small. I said, Pastor, why? There's a lot of space. Please, oh, the truth I know. We don't know the truth. Peter, don't come and discourage me. You see, truth is always embedded in people's hearts. Truth is not felt. Truth is known. You don't listen. Many people say that I can feel the presence of God. No, you don't feel the presence, you feel his power. Because his presence is always with you. Whether you are manifesting it or not, he said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So the presence is always there. Whether you feel it or you don't feel it, he's there. But what you feel physically now, who wants to feel what I feel? Who wants to feel? This is, this is the power. It's like electricity. This is power. This is the power. So what you say, I feel the Holy Ghost. No, you feel power. He's always in you. He lives in you. He dwells in you. He manifests in you. He's not now coming. So whenever you feel him, his power is at work. God is known. In Judah is God known. Come on, give the Lord a mighty clap here. Come on. Come on, give it to the Lord. Come on, give it to the Lord. Come on, give it to the Lord. Can you hear me? At the holy place. That is where we call the truth. That is where we call the sick. You can see the table of showbread. You can see the gold, the stick. Where God is searching your heart. What is in your heart? Now that place, if you get to that place in prayer, you see that as you are praying, ideas come into your head. Please don't move to that idea, bind it. And don't bind it for too long. You realize that as you are kneeling down, you see that your name of your girlfriend will come. That have you checked on your girlfriend? Maybe he's going to visit that other guy. 
Check your phone and see if you are sent to a message. Wait a minute. It's a way to get you off the track. And <laughs> you must be smarter than that. <laughs> oh, check you, check your phone. Maybe someone has sent you some momo. Someone has sent you some momo. So you go for your phone to check you. No, 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 no. The enemy is trying to play a buffoon with your brain. You are in the holy of holies. You don't get that thing to distract you. You want to be in God's presence. My wife is here. Everything she said yesterday. We did this in the house. Come and see my little girl worshiping over an hour in God's house and I had to keep quiet somehow and hear this little girl pray I said what and I was talking to the mother I said you are shocked I'm not shocked she does it always over an hour at this age she prays over an hour and we had to beg her to go and sleep we begged she wanted more. And in the morning, she had a dream. Hey, you. This show bread I'm giving you is nonsense bread for you. You know why? When David had to eat the show bread, the priest asked David, You want to eat the show bread? said have your men been living holy and David said at least for the last three days you've never touched a woman then you can eat the showbread because for the showbread there's a kind of mentality you eat it with it is not this bread pan we are here to talk to you Nida Erasime Nieji Nao Wonkuto Name Nida. That's the place where Nida in the throne room is saying, Oh, so Roha Bodo Name. Amen. 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 That's the place there. Now, no, 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 Just you careful, call your wife if she has arrived or not, because they've been attempted. Now, me tribute and team, yeah. Now, me tribute and team, yeah. We say, Mama, you know, who knew, sir. What's he move? At that place, in the case of Jesus, sweat had vanished. There was no more sweat in him. He had cried. There was no more tears. Now what was coming was blood. His water had finished. The flesh was dead. It is now a sacrifice. At that place, you don't go in sweating. Your, your energy is finished. So when the enemy tells you, do you know what the devil is about to do? You don't talk. You keep worshiping. You know what? Because as you worship, God handles it for you. If you go and solve it, then at the end of the day, he can't solve it for you. Stay there. Stay there. Don't move. Let him handle the problem. Worship him. Spend time with him. Keep the prayer going on. Captain of Israel's host and guide. All for who seek the land. Abba. At that place, beneath thy shadows we abide. Under the cloud of thy protecting love. Again, captain of Israel's host, lift up your hands for me. Power! 
relieve thy shadow. Like a I'm not leaving the place of our strength. Thy grace, thy grace. I am not a door sakata bedi kato bedi. I'm not leaving the throne room. So just in the holy place, not the holy of holies yet. Our strength, thy grace. Look up to me, the kete bede be shoni mini madaba. Thy grace, oh, oh, oh. Your heart that speaks, but you don't sleep there. You can see that around that time, you see that your head is aching, it is no headache. Oh. Your spirit is opening up. The headache is you are about to grab some truth. That headache is no headache. Oh. You say it's headache. No, what you move here, yeah? soft me deep by me. I have this headache anytime I pray. They have blocked your spirit from accessing certain information. But at this level, the information is about to be downloaded. <laughs> oh, oh, my friend is a buffer. It's buffering. The data is so big that you must add some more worship. When you add more worship, you are buying more data. And when you buy more data, now the flow can come in. Let me tell you. Fill my cup, Lord. I lift it up, Lord. Come and quench the testing of my soul. Bread from heaven. Stage, eh? You go to the stage in that place, you don't speak with him.
seat if you can. Take your seat if you can. If I don't finish, I can never finish. I know myself. At that place, you start singing all the songs that will connect you. Throw away the phone. Let the devil know, put off the phone. That it was on silent. You get angry and you put the phone off. You are telling God at that stage, everything is meaningless when it comes to Him. That is the level of worship you've got into. Nobody can come between you and your God. And when God gets you there, He has your attention. At this stage, you are finished sweating. This body is so tired of that one hour prayer. Now your heart, your heart, your heart is yearning for him. When you get to this stage, some of the songs I sing is this. Pass me not, O Jai. I'm not crying because I need a shoe. Look at what you did to Moses. You called him a friend. See what you did to Abraham. You were about to destroy a nation. Say, You are my friend. I want to consult you. What about me, Lord? Pass me on. Pass me I've seen many travel and break through. What about me? Am I also not your servant? What is it you want me to do at this stage, Lord? What is there to be done? Tell me I'm here for it. If you want to send me, send me. Savior, 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 you are my Savior. I've done it all. I've said it all. I've prophesied it. I yearn for you. of truth. I am at a place of truth. Tell me the truth to my face. Is it my character? Is it my behavior? What is it about me? I can't live without him that again. I can walk this road alone. In my life, I need you. Holy one can take my hand. When I still don't feel him there, then I come. Lord, I come to you. Let my heart be changed. That way you don't do it in the outer court or in the inner. In the holy place. Flowing from the grace that I find in you. I tell him, Lord, now you are revealing to me my weakness, right? Lord, I've come to know. 
Lord. The weaknesses I see, he'll reveal them to you. When he reveals the truth to you, that's when he reveals why you are where you are. We'll be stripped away. We'll be stripped away. By the power of your love. In this room, Lord, in this atmosphere, Lord, I don't want to be in the middle of nowhere. Bring me nearer. I want the holy of holies. Bring me be, bring me be, bring me be. Draw me, draw me. I want to go to the mercy seat. Draw me to your side. Let me to your side. side. And I, I will arise up on the eagle. I will soar with you. And I will soar with you. As your spirit leads me home. you know something happens to you you begin to fear know why you are afraid because truth will expose your weakness truth will expose your sin you have washed in the lava you have washed in the basin but not truth the deep part that the enemy kept within you that's the time if we are we were, you, you had childhood abuse. It comes to the fall. Maybe when you were growing up, they told you you were very ugly. That's why you love women. Chasing women makes your pride sore. That's the place it begins to show you why you are a thief. He begins to bring certain things to you. But that's the place you also know that the Bible said, let us come boldly. And find grace in time of need. And mercy and grace in time of need. That's the time you don't run away. That's the time you run to the mercy seat. When you get there, you will see that mercy was waiting for you all along. He was waiting to show you his mercy. The mercy seat is not outside. The mercy seat is not in the outer court. The mercy seat is not in the holy place. It is in the holies of holies. That's why we tell God that irrespective of who I am, I'm still your child. I'm still your son. I can't eat crumbs. So I come to the throne room and at this place, all that I want to touch is your mercy. Mercy said no I will never let you go I will never let you slip away You don't have to be afraid Mercy said no Sin will never take control Life and death stood face to face. Darkness tried to steal my heart away. Thank you, Jesus. The mercy That is the place you come. And Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, I am the life. What does it mean that you are the life? Now he gives you his life. So the life you have is no longer the old life. Because of the mercy he has given you, despite your past, despite your problems, despite whatever. Now let the devil tell you, because you did this, that is why I'm punishing you. No, you can't hold me bound because I have... Oh, 
God, you are not getting me. You can't keep punishing me. I have passed that stage. And hear me. In the Old Testament, the priest went to the Holy Spirit for this once a year. If I say this, I'll say that at least once in your year, once a year, I'd have said that once a year, do a three hour non stop encounter with God's prayer. But I realized that that is not enough. Because when Jesus finished and he accepted the will of God, they put him to the cross. And I was teaching the first service to this man, he had a gift. And the gift was being hindered by Peter, James, and John. Those business partners who are calling when you are praying, they are not the one to bring the millions. <laughs> the one who you think will break your heart is not the one who is the one assigned to you. When you commit yourself to God, God begins to open a certain door. Now, when Jesus went to the cross and died, the Bible said the veil that covered his life that made people go there once a year was torn open so that we can have access every day, every time. Today, every veil that made you have breakthrough once in a while, that made you have breakthrough once in a while, must be torn. I said, it must be torn. You must have day to day miracle. Day to day miracle. I think I'm not preaching to somebody here. That veil will never tear. And you have faced Gethsemane. And you've gone through that experience. And when you come out, that veil, yeah, my 2021 years ago, a veil was torn. Today, me, useless FD Yale. Me too. I can send you poster. Then come for a program and you leave your house and come. God, I thank you. Hey! A foolish boy like me. Somebody who doesn't deserve to be being called a man of God. When the veil got torn, when the veil gets torn, in the days of your power, the people shall become volunteers. By the time you come out of that place, see business doors, people are calling you. No, no, it's not you they are calling, no. They are calling the grace upon your life. They are calling the God you have encountered. They can't disappoint that God. They can't disappoint the person you met. So what is Satan doing to me and you? It's simple. Stay at the outer court. Don't go deep. Stay outside. Don't come in here. But I want someone to say, man of God, I'm tired of serving God anyhow. I want to catch him in the holies of holies. And I just don't want to encounter him once. Forever. 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 Give me forever. We sing hallelujah. We sing hallelujah. Overcome. We sing hallelujah. We join the angels in singing. We sing hallelujah. At this stage, get ready to get sicknesses out of your body. The lamb has overcome. The lamb has overcome. We sing. We sing hallelujah. We sing hallelujah. overcome forever he is glorified forever he is lifted I 
Because he went through Gethsemane for three hours. Listen. Death could not hold. The grave stopped before him. He silenced the posts of sin and grave. Beautiful. What a beautiful name. I said, people will call your name, the name and wonder in Jesus amazement. My what a beautiful name it is. Nothing. Nothing compares to this. What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus. Listen, if Jesus had not faced Gethsemane, you know what will happen? He will be only be useful to Peter, James, and John. Anybody who is preventing you from getting that encounter with God is limiting you from your next level. They will not allow you to pray because you have to pay rent. Because you must always be under their control. But there are about 70 people right now who will have their encounter now. Some will have their encounter tomorrow. Some will have their encounter Tuesday. Between now and next Sunday, it is encounter, 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 encounter. It is encounter, 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 encounter. You will be encountering your redeemer, your savior. The more I seek you, the more I find you. The more I find you, the more I love you. The more I seek you, the more I see. Put the camera down and lift your hands. Carry up. The more I find. The more I love you, I want to sit at your feet, drink from the cup in your hands. 
lay back against you and breathe. Feel your heart beat. This love is so deep. It's more than I can stand. I melt in your peace. It's overwhelming. I wanna sit at your feet. Drink from the cup in your hands. Lay back against you and breathe. Feel your heart beat. This love is so deep. It's more than I can stand. I melt in your peace. It's overwhelming. Maybe you don't know this song. Let me give you another one. You will know. Play, keep playing. But I not 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 And as you are, you have made me your own. There is nothing greater than this. That's why I love you forevermore. If you are sick, lay hands on your own self and tell yourself. You make my life so beautiful. And as you are, you are. He's giving you the blueprint. 70 people. There is nothing greater than this. That's why I love you forevermore. more of you I want more of you Jesus the more I know you the more I want to know you Jesus I enter church I thought that was all of The more I know you, the more I want to know you, Jesus. You can't stop reading the Bible. I didn't say you can't stop praying. You can't stop reading the Word, though. You can't stop. More of you. Why are you? You are not minding anybody. Are you not coming home? You are not minding anybody. Is there anything wrong with you? You are not responding. More of you. 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 More. Instead, you forget your problem. Before you know you are healed, you begin to stretch your body. In this atmosphere, you begin to check yourself. Check the pain. Check the pain. Check the pain. Check your system.
the heaven and earth declare. Do it for me. Now, protocol watches. 70 people are going to pick up some oil. Just bring them to me. 70 people. Whether they are standing there sitting, I don't know where they are. Again, they wept. The morning sun was dead. The savior of the world, they think you are dead. Unless a grain of it falls to the ground, it cannot multiply. You are not dead. His body on the cross, his blood. At the throne room, people can look at you. Look at your life. You are wasting your life. When are you getting married? When are you getting pregnant? Close your eyes wherever you are. 70 encounters. Seventy encounters. Seventy people. Your prayer has come like a memorial. Your hunger. Your desire, your appetite has come to God like a memorial. Protocol, get ready for them. People will start behaving strangely. People's body will start vibrating. Some will start running. Some will start trotting. 
Some will start speaking in weird tongues. Some will start dancing. It's all kinds of encounters. Don't stop them, please. Don't stop them. Guide them. Some will run because they are late in life. Some will dance because there's a pain in their hearts. There are different, different encounters. Some drunkards are appearing in the room. Drunkards. You must be so intoxicated that you don't care what people say about your life again. You live for God. Please be on your feet with me if you can. Now be quiet for me. Only the keyboard. Be quiet for me. This atmosphere just changed to the inner court. Please, if they bring you up here, don't get up again. If you go, you hurt yourself. You'll not get more protocol to help you. So if they bring you here, stay. Just stay. So that the protocol can go for the others. Just stay down. I plead with you. My protocol, they are not up to 70. And God wants to pick 70. Close your eyes for me. Very soon you'll feel like vomiting. Don't worry, you move the nose mark and vomit it. The power of God will come on you in diverse ways. Please listen to me. In the holies of holies, in the inner court, you don't talk. Keep quiet. At this place, let your heart do the communication. Don't say a word. Seek him. Seek him. Seek him. Let your whole system be silent. Drop the crowns. The thrones. Please, Holy Spirit, we plead with you. Give us the seventy in a nice way. It's starting. It's starting. It's starting. Francis, let us see some of their protocols or pastors help us. Thank you, Jesus. Can the keyboard also go off? Thank you, Jesus. Now, please close your eyes. Be quiet. Personal encounters. If you are very quiet, you will meet him. If you are not, you will miss him. Control it. Personal. It's personal. It's 
is best love. 70 people. It's personal. It's one on one. Control it. For some of you, it's just the cramps. You've not even started getting it yet. Calm down. If you are sick in any part of your body, it's the time to start exercising your body. Start moving it. I had they brought somebody here with stroke. If you were the one, start moving your body. The healing has started taking place. An eye infirmity, a left eye problem has just been healed. Ear infection has just been healed. Ear infection. Kidneys has just been restored. Thank you, Jesus. Now, Holy Spirit, do it. Please lift your hands. It's a sign of surrender. The Bible said, let men lift up holy hands everywhere to the Lord. When you lift up your hands, it helps you to forget where you are. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. The encounter with the 70, Lord. These are desperate people. They are desperate. They are so desperate. Let them dance. Let them live for joy. If this place is now your abode, Holy Spirit, let it be proven to these ones that you dwell here. Yeah. Yeah, there's a staring. There's a staring. There's a staring. There is a staring. A deep stare. A deep stare. You are going deeper into the waters. You can not but catch some big fish. Father Francis, please come to me. Forever. Help me here. Yeah, encounter with him. It's personal. You, some of you feel your heart beating so fast. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You have the patience to wait for the doctor. To wait for the manager, to wait for the appointment, it's your waiting time. Be quiet and wait. Don't be in a hurry. Don't let thoughts flood your mind. Think about his goodness. Don't tell him a problem. Please, you cut off. Don't talk to him. Speak with your heart. Hear the instruction. Don't speak with your mouth for him. At the holies of holies. And the holy place. It is shh. You seek him. And you find him in your heart. If you find him physically, you missed it. 
Now I know what he's doing. He's searching your heart, the deep things. The search map is searching. It's just rolling. Searching the will of God for you. They need to be canvassed and put into your database. My protocols are ready because it's going to be very, very, very interesting the next fifth, five minutes, five, six minutes. It's going to be very interesting. The more quieter you are, the more you will sense him. The more silent, the more you encounter him. And he doesn't come quietly, he comes suddenly. He builds the momentum, then it becomes sudden. Forget your hands must be lifted, please. Don't get tired. Ezekiel was told, lie on your side for 390 something days. He had to lie there just to save his people. Lift your hands, close your eyes. Make sure that there's si make sure you can't even hear the keyboard in your spirit. You can't even hear me. How silent you must be. Oh, Jesus, the seventy, we are ready. Yeah, I know. And now we are ready. Yeah. Yeah. Diverse encounters. Diverse encounters. Diverse encounters. He will come suddenly. I'm not going to lay hands. I'm being tempted to. I'm not going to do it. Until he has picked his 70. I'm not. Some of your song will come on your lip. Don't, don't be in a hurry to sing it. Sing it in you. Because it will burst forth. And when it burst forth, that is it.
tears flow. Some of you, the tips of your finger has started burning. Don't put down your hands. Let it burn. That finger burning has a reason. Lord, I will expect all your seventy. All your seventy. Whoever is married to you to paralyze you. Whoever slept with you to paralyze you, I cast that spirit to loose from your body. I command your veins, your tissues, your sinews to be made whole. No more pain. No more discomfort. The veins are freed. The mind is freed. He stood working. Please watch it for me, my protocol team. The next ones that are coming could be a little bit violent. They are dangerous to the enemy. The devil brought a lot of things their way to stop them. But this nice encounter is empowering them so strongly. And because of that, there will be a bit of struggle. Sweet Holy Spirit, just release them for me first. I thank you, Jesus. It's thus. They are financial pillars. Apostles with a difference. Apostles with a difference. They will not just prophesy. They will give keys that will unlock God's will. And he's picking them right now. It starts now. It starts now. It starts now. An angel just dropped into this room just because of this. As soon as you see that angel, you can't be quiet. You can't be quiet. As soon as you see that angel, your mouth cannot be shut. As soon as you see that angel, you can't be quiet. Put the camera down and help them, please. That's why I said I needed more hands. As soon as you see this angel, I see. Is that spirit? He will open your eyes to see that angel. Some of you, this angel has been around you for years. What is he looking for? Submit you to the authority of Jehovah God. Take away your weapons from you. Make you useless. Make you harmless. In Jesus' name. You will see that angel. That is the angel of his presence. He will give babies. He will grant babies. Whoever slept with you, 
break from him. No. Free him. This is irrespective of age, color, society. They tied you down, right? Not in the throne room anymore. When your spirit is freed, your body can't be there. When your spirit is freed, your body can't be there. When your spirit is freed, your body can be there and need strong men. Bring them to the front so that you can have more freedom. When your spirit is freed, you can no longer be tied down. Yeah, yeah, yes, yes. See that angel of his presence. He said, I'm going to guide you out of this. I'll seal the deal. I'll seal it. Yeah. That shoe they took from you is coming back. <laughs> Listen, let's stop this thing. Oh. When we go to church to have what? Fellowship with man. No. You can't have fellowship with man. In the house of God is fellowship with God. You are free in Jesus' name. That's, that's how simple it is. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. There's another wave coming. I don't know why. This is an apostolic move. People who are apostolically inclined. I don't know whether you understand what I mean by apostolically inclined. They don't just know God, but they make lives worth living. You encounter them and your business is not the same. Your home is not the same. Your life is not the same. What encounter with a human being? And what has made this human being this way? You should have encountered God. He encountered God. I've met many men. They disappointed me. But he has never disappointed. Please watch it again. My protocol. Another big move. Another big move. Because I saw this angel placing marks on people's forehead and asking, what is this? He said, this is for favor. So when I place this mark on this one's forehead, never will they be disappointed again. Nobody will look at them and make them a disappointed too. And he said, he's pouring the mark on people's forehead. And when this mark comes on you, you can start, you start having your head itching. Your forehead will start itching. That is the sign that your forehead has been touched with this favor and it's happening now and this is seven people seven people seven people that favor is coming on your forehead because the angel of the lord is stamping it there that is how they place a mark on a man called cain even though he was a sinner and nobody could touch him it's a mark it's a mark now lord mark the seven out for me I give you praise, Jesus. All the seven, mark them out. Mark them out. Mark them out. Mark them. Mark them. One, two, three, four, five, six, and the seventh one. Mark them. Mark them. Mark them for favor. Marked for favor. Help them. Help them. Marked for favor. Marked for favor. 
You step in there and they said you are late, but it's yours. When you go for the contract, they said there are 400 of you, but you didn't apply, but it is yours. You're, you're coming in. Changes the negotiating pattern. Why? Because you are marked for it. Release all the seven. Release all the seven. Release all the seven. Release all the seven. With a mighty move of God. With a mighty move of God. It's an unprecedented favor. It's an unprecedented favor. It's an unprecedented favor. It's an unprecedented favor. Please watch them because their head will start misbehaving. Some of them will have to shake their head. Some of them cannot control it. It's unprecedented. Encounter with God. Encounter with God. Give me an update, please. Encounter with God. Kobisa, <laughs> It's funny, man. I don't play with people like you. But I point in the name of Jesus, go out. He's free. Everybody put your hands on your stomach quickly for me. Say, I have some gifts in me. Say, the veil must tear. I didn't say, the veil must tear. So that I will be exposed. See, a man's gift makes room for him and brings him before great men. Please watch them. I have my gift in me. As I lay hands on my belly, as I lay hands on my belly, I stir up my gifts. The veil is torn. I am exposed to succeed. Now keep quiet with your two hands on your own belly, please. And please close your eyes. This is not one of the church service you attended, please. No, 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 no. This is not one of the service, one of the meetings you go. No. This is personal. When you get out of this room, you go, you see demons running away. You didn't pray, you didn't fast. You didn't even go anywhere, but you are wondering, ah, nobody prayed for me, nobody did anything. You think nobody did nothing? You saw a demon saying something, oh, jaku, anumu, jaku, anumu. <laughs> you being here as there's a force holding you. Let the gifts and the callings within you be brought to the fore. Whatever is holding down, whatever veil is preventing access to you, by the predetermined counsel of Jehovah God, according to the pattern drawn by you by the plans of God, let the blood of sprinkling, the blood of Jesus, permeate through your life, release you, and bring to you great men, great people. And it's happening now. You will feel something happening to your belly. Physically, I'm not talking about spiritual. Physically, you feel something happening to your belly. Anything you ate from childhood, that is a force fighting you will not stay in you. Anything that is the reason why you are not going where you are going cannot stay in the belly again. Your gifts are being exposed. It's starting. It's starting. It's starting. It's starting. It's starting. 
It's starting. It's starting. It's starting. Poor. Kotebe. Mr. Orlando, do me a favor. Eh? Leave that rope there. Eh? Join protocol team for me. Help me do protocol. Eh? Help me. Good. Help me. Help me. You, you. Yeah. Help. Help. Do protocol for me. Something in the belly. Help me. Something in the belly. Something in the belly. Something in the belly. You keep wasting your resources, but your belly, your belly, your belly, in your belly, something is taking place. Lay your hands on your own belly. On your belly. Come on. On your belly. On your belly. Your belly must flow rivers of living waters. It's a river that must flow. It's a river that must flow. It's a river that must flow. It's a river. It's a river. He that believes in me, out of his belly, out of his belly, will flow a river. It's a river that must flow. It's a river that must flow. It's a river. Somebody must drink from your waters. Somebody's waiting. It's like a woman who is pregnant. Your breast naturally develops milk so that the baby can drink it. Because of the vision you carry, provision must naturally be secured. Because of the vision you carry, provision must naturally be carried forth. Because your belly carries a vision. Please, I saw a surgical angel here. And I just asked him what it's about. He said, I'm going to operate on people's life. People's womb. People's reproductive system. People's organs. He said he's here to do an operation. He's going to operate on people's life. This surgical... Oh, sorry. There are three of them. Three angels. What? And one is carrying replacement parts. One is carrying replacement parts. And they will start the operation very soon. An operation is taking place in people's bodies. Healings. All kinds of healings are going to take place right now. Healing. Healing. And I just saw an angel showing somebody's hair. And I said, Lord, is this an attachment? He said, no. This person wants the hair to grow. It's a female. The hair is breaking. But the Lord tells me that you are no longer going to have that attachment. Your hair is going to start growing very fast. That hair is start growing because I saw the hair grow very fast. And I asked this angel, is it an attachment you put on? He said, this is not an attachment. It is a part of the hair. And this person, this lady, your hair will start itching you. Your hair right now in this room inside your hair you feel it is itching i said i say a jewel with two more setting your hair will start itching and protocol when you see the person scratching the hair please bring the person to me very fast because i don't want anybody to spoil any part of their body right now let that surgical operation take place right now let that surgical operation take place right now let that surgical operation take place right now angels of god release the person to us now Operations. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Hair operation. Hair operation. Hair. Hair operation. The scalp. They are working on somebody's scalp. They are working on somebody's scalp. Yeah. 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 Somebody's scalp. There's a work on it. Somebody's. They just cut somebody's tummy. Replacing parts. Replacing parts. Replacing parts. Replacing parts. Huh, who is this person I'm seeing with the operation of? Thank you, Jesus. Parts are being replaced. Yes. 
Yeah. 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 You don't have energy, right? You always lose that energy. There's somebody to my left. You are not strong like you used to. Who is that? Please come to me. To my left here. You are, you are not strong like you used to. The energy you used to have, you don't have it. Come to me. There's somebody else. Who else? You are not strong. The angels are performing operation. They used to be very, very strong, but that strength has dropped so bad. There's another person. Who is that? Please. Who is that? Don't, 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 don't. Keep standing. Are you close your eyes for me, please? No. Close your eyes for me. Fresh. 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 I'm looking for some two men, Pastor David. Look for them for me. I'm looking for some two men. An angel just went to them, fought somewhere, and brought some shoe and put it on their feet. And the Lord tells me that they smile. But everything in their life seems to be coming to a total crash. These are very strong men. These are not boys. Please. Look for them for me. They are in this anger. He's speaking them. He's speaking them. He's speaking them. He's speaking them. When the shoe gets to your feet, you can't stand on your two feet. When the shoe is put on your feet, you can't stand on your two feet. Because it says that I'm establishing you now. I'm establishing you now. Whatever was taken from you is returning back. They took it from you, but it's coming back. It was taken from you and you, you tried calling them, getting back to them. They didn't mind you. They didn't even respond to you. But if I be a man of God, Monday by 6 p.m., you have an appointment for Tuesday morning, 9 a.m. And the shoe will be put on your foot. It's taking place now. It's taking place now. It's taking place now. Men! 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 It's taking place. It's taking place. It's taking place. It's taking place. Those women that need babies, a surgical operation has taken place on you. Now, all of a sudden, you are going to feel a strong desire for wee wee. And this wee wee that you are going to wee wee is not an ordinary wee wee. It is the release. It is the release of every attack of the enemy concerning your life. Everybody begin to thank God. Everybody begin to thank God. Do you have any pain in your body? Do you have any pain in your body? No. Where? Your knee? It's paining you. It's paining you. I have you on the ground. Look at me. Look at me. Try and lift those legs again. It's becoming lighter. Keep doing it. Pastor Francis, please keep, keep guiding him for me. Everybody begin to thank God. Begin to thank God. If you can take your seat, take your seat. 
This is what I don't like about some of this program. I have to be closing. Oh, you know me. Oh, you know me. Oh, you know me. Oh, sir. She rather. Oh, you know me. Oh, you know me. Oh, you know me. That's what's up. In this atmosphere, I don't expect anybody to be sick. But if you are sick, please come to me. Don't be shy. Come. If you are sick, I repeat, in this atmosphere, I don't expect it. But if you are still sick, come to me. Oh, you know me. What's wrong with you? Your stomach. Just mark me. What's wrong? You will be often. So they say, is it you do not track? Good. Oh, you know me. Your head. Oh, you know me. Your spine. Oh, you know me. Answer. Shirada. Wa ma mia misa Mi chonya mi mo Don't go check for me Wa ma mia misa Look at me Close your eyes. Keep looking at me. Why are you? Why are you? And raise Santa. Me see. I don't know me. Why are you? And raise Santa. Oh, 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 oh. Wasa futi ni wo ye Yesu ye ye uhuma brave ji ye uva chefu ye wo i ye wo. Yeah, yeah, oh my, brother, yeah, boy. What's wrong with you? I can't say. You are made whole. You are perfected. The curse is broken. Come on, let's lift it up. Nice, oh, oh, my. Take this impartation home. As you lay hands, let the throat cancer vanish. Take it. Take it. Take it. Power. Check your head and get ready.
born in the deep. And come in, I declare you healed. I command the bacteria to cease in Jesus' name. Look at me. Out to her mouth. Now. Yambo. Yambo. Ninti. Ninti. Anka. Hey. Pass to her mouth. Yambo. It's going to come out like vomit. Hey! Get out of here. I am a product of his mercy. That I got and I get every time I enter his throne room. Yeah, boy. Watch her, they are being operated on her, they are operating on her. Take five more minutes of your time before I take the offering. You feel like you go home with the offering at this stage. I don't care, but let me tell you something. He just told me something, Francis. If you forget this, I'll be in trouble with you. I said, Lord, what is this? He said, I am re equipping with fresh tools my assigned people. I have called some people and I'm re tooling them with fresh weapons, fresh weapons. That will give them advanced knowledge, advanced mindset, advanced, they will go ahead of the generation. Like Joseph went ahead of his generation and prepared for the generation. And the Lord is saying that I will build in them a capacity that their generation cannot accept them. They cannot accept them. But I need to do this because I must preserve my homo sapiens. I must preserve a generation. I must preserve a generation. I must preserve a generation. And hear me, those people, the power of God, whether you are sitting, whether you like it, you don't like it, whether you believe, you don't believe it, as long as he has earmarked you for it, he'll pick you up. He will pick you. You don't like your lifestyle, but he will pick you. You hate yourself, but he loves you. Please, he's still picking them. I don't know. He's still picking them. 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 You know why? That is why we moved to this auditorium. in advance empowered in advance guided in advance tooled in advance sent a man before them he sent a man before them he will always send a man before them he will always send a man before whatever God is doing there's nothing he will do that he will not raise an army before 
He's raising somebody before. He's raising somebody before. He's raising somebody before. He's raising somebody before. He's raising somebody for medical ideas are coming to somebody's mind. Medical mindset is coming to somebody's mind. Breakthrough ideas are coming. Financial ideas are coming to somebody. He sent a man. He sent a man. He sent ahead of man. Get up, get up, get up, get up, get up, get up there. Other verses, stand, face them for me. Face them, stretch for your hands towards them. God is raising army for you. All SEC people, get up. All SEC people, get up. God is raising an army for you. Even the SEC branch. God is raising an army for you. God is raising an army for you. God is raising an army for you. God is raising a generation. He's empowering them for you. 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 He's empowering them. 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 He might not like you, but he likes you. Everybody can hate you, but if God loves you, ah, yeah. Joseph brothers, you don't like Joseph, right? When he becomes a prime minister, you will bow down before. You will not know that he's the person you hate. Let everybody hate you. Let God love you. You will make the difference. This is an army. This is how I fight my battles. 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 It may look like I'm surrounded, I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, I'm surrounded by you. Watch them stop. As you see, it may look like he's not done. He's not done yet. He's not done yet. It may look. It may look like I'm surrounded by I'm surrounded by you. This is how I win my battles. This is how I win my battles. First it was fragrance, then it turned to fire. My worship is my weapon. This is how I win my battles. First it was fragrance, then it turned to fire. My worship is my weapon. This is how I win my battles. This is how I win. This is how I win, win, win. This is how I win. With the smoke of my worship is released upon the earth. This is how I win. This is how I win, win, win. This is how I win. The smoke of my worship release upon the earth. This is how I win. This is how I win. If you worship, you will 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 win. This is how I win. This is how the smoke of my worship, the smoke of my worship, release upon the earth. First it was fragrance, first it was fragrance, then it turned to fire. My worship is my weapon. 
This is how I win my battles. First it was fragrance. Then it turned to fire. Hey ya, hey ya, hey ya. Say yes, my will. Yeah, God, da, 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 da. This is how I win my battles. First it was fragrance. First it was fragrance. Then it turned to fire. Then it turned to fire. My worship is my weapon. This is how I win my battle. First it was fragrance. First it was fragrance. Hey! It's working at all. Then it turned to fire. Look at your Hey! Hey! My worship is my weapon. Hey, weapons. what's the name? This is how Look at your father. my battle. Look this at your father. Go. Say! This is how I win. We win. This is how I win. Look at Look at your father. The smoke of my worship release upon the air. This is how I win. They don't want you to win. So they want you to be quiet. You have this to is how I win. This is how you win. This is the stick you came to church with. This is how I win. This is how I win. Win, win. This is how I win. The smoke of my worship. The smoke of my worship. What are you? Have you seen that guy you prayed for? This is how I win. This is how I win. This is how I win. I win. This is how I win. The smoke of my worship. The smoke of my worship. Tell me, tell me how does it work? First it was fragrance, then it turned to fire. My worship is my weapon. This is how I win my battle. Listen. You are going to do a personal CD. If you can't do it, come and talk to my office. They'll do something for you. A two hour non stop deep worship. Are you with me? And then you put it on your phone. Connect it to a Bluetooth device. And Master, Bobusa. Just pray in tongues ah, till the CD or the MP3 is over. I'm teaching you how to win this war. This is how I win. 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 This is how I win. The smoke of my worship is upon the earth. This is how I win. This is how I win. She's hungry. Give it to her. This is how I win. She's so hungry. The smoke of my worship is upon the earth. Unfortunately, unfortunately, he's still picking people. I thought it was over. He said, I'm still picking. He said, I'm taking people ahead. I'm taking people ahead. Ahead of their generation. Ahead of their generation. Ahead of their time. Ahead of their season. They are ahead. Get up. Come. 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 Look at me. Lift up your hands. Don't close your eyes. Is connected to umbilical cord. I guess it. When the smoke of my worship is released upon the earth. Man, cut to yare ye yo, yare ye yo. Nonsense. 
This is how I win. 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 The smoke of my worship when it's released. Oh, Holy Spirit. Now, he just told me something again. He said, there are some people, they don't like themselves. The food, they are a mistake. But he says that he's about to touch you. And from today, you will know that there is no mistake with you. He said he's about to touch you. And I asked him how. He said, you will feel the warmth of his embrace. He will hug you. And when he asks you, asks you, you feel some, my friend, he said, some eye pimples or ghost pimples or <laughs> whatever you call it. He said he's going to hug some people. Sometimes you don't even know whether you are transgender or gender or gender or gender or whatever. You don't even know who you are. You don't know what you are like. And he said, Francis, tell those people that I love them. And I'm about to hug them. Everybody close your eyes with me. The hugging begins now. He's hugging some people. He's embracing them. He's embracing them. They were full of love they've never had. This love, no parent can give it. Not even your mom, your father. This is a hug. This is a hug. He's hugging you. It takes place now. Please watch that. Watch that. Watch that, please. Hug. He's hugging you. He's hugging you. He will hold you so close. You feel like a real human being has hugged you. I'm not talking about, I say, maybe you, you feel a real human being has held you like this in his arms. He's doing it now. 